Scene one, take one with Kyle Loftus. What's good, y'all? I'm gonna need that. What's good, y'all? Kyle Loftus, and today we are talking about 10 plus best investments as a filmmaker. Let's do it. All right, y'all, so to give some context, one, welcome to this weird setup here we've got today. But today I wanted to specifically talk about 10 plus investments that I think you can make as a filmmaker here and now, and they'll be worthwhile. Um, you know, originally for me starting out as a filmmaker, I was overwhelmed with the amount of gear I felt like I needed to have in order to be successful. Additionally, as a result of that, you know, I ended up investing and spending so much money on pointless gear, random gear that, you know, is outdated or I just no longer need after a couple months. And so I wasted a ton of money. So I thought it'd be really cool to showcase and share a video with you guys on, you know, 10 plus items that I think are a guaranteed great investment um, and that won't depreciate over time. In essence, you know, it won't lose value. It's, it's gonna maintain, or if anything, it's gonna be more valuable to you on set. So first and foremost, uh, clapboard. This is huge, uh, seems like a very small thing, but especially if you're getting into narrative work or you're doing super long interview days or anything like that, even music videos, having a clapboard will be super helpful, um, especially when dealing with multiple takes. Because if you know that your fourth take was your favorite for scene two, um, but you shot 12 takes, not having to scrub through all eight or 12 of those takes but being able to see right on your display on the thumbnail image, these clapboards, um, seeing that scene four shows right there, well, you can clip on that clip right away and you've got your favorite one. Um, so I think clapboards can save a ton of time and they really just help you stay super organized on set as well as in the post-production process. Next, next is glass. I think glass is an incredible investment. Next, I wanna talk about glass. So glass is just an incredible investment, guys. As long as you take care of the lenses, they're never really gonna depreciate in value. Now again, there might be upgrades and better versions made, but if you're maintaining the lens, the quality is gonna maintain the same and it's gonna be a great product that you can continue to use throughout your filmmaking career. Next, extension cords. <laughs> Extension cords are great. You're definitely gonna need those and have to have them for sets. A lot of times you're working with areas with no power and so you need to be able to string out 150 to 200 feet just to get to your next source of power. Um, you're doing shoots in a house or in a building with multiple different rooms and lighting setups in different areas from outside to in one room to in another, coming through a window into the next room. You know, you, there's so many different ways you're gonna need to be able to set up lights and you're gonna need a lot of different power sources for the, like for a monitor for a teleprompter, continuous power on your camera, etc. There's a lot of reasons you're gonna need power and so having extension cords as well as adapters that have multiple outlets is gonna be a huge help for you on set. Next, I wanna talk about lights. So I've got the Aperture 120D shining on me now, but I think lights overall, yes, I would definitely suggest investing in a quality light, making sure the CRI is really good, making sure the reviews are good, and that it puts out some good wattage output. I'd, I'd side with LED as well, because nowadays LEDs often give you control of the tint as well as the temperature. Um, so being able to go from tungsten to daylight or you know tinting from magenta to green, it, it just that makes life so, so much easier. Um, being able to do those on set in camera rather than having to worry about changing up color and, and things like that in post. Um, but lights are huge, guys. You cannot, filmmaking does not exist without lights. <laughs> So investing in quality lights is gonna be huge. And again, unless the lights just, obviously they're going to break down and deteriorate over time, they will longer last, but they're going to be a very valuable investment. They're going to last you a long time uh, and you're gonna definitely get your money's worth out of it as compared to a lot of other things that you could invest in. Next, I wanna talk about this right here. So this is from Wooden Camera. This is essentially a adapter set of multiple sized Allen wrenches. I think Allen wrenches are huge because once you kind of get to uh, you know, the bigger stages of filmmaking or you start leveling up more, you start getting a cage for your camera, 
uh, you get glide, uh, glide cam or you get a shoulder rig, you start adding these other elements. You're gonna need this because it's gonna make a huge difference in being able to tighten up uh, bolts, loosen things up, being able to easily maneuver and move things around um, on your camera's build body, on the cage, etc. Additionally, you know, tripods and shoulder rigs, etc. You know, eventually they loosen up, and so you're gonna need to be able to tighten on set. Uh, and nothing is worse than having to scram for a penny or dime or having to break your fingernails just to tighten the thread uh, and get it locked in tight. So having a set of Allen wrenches or some kind of uh, adapter like this is huge on set. Next, I wanna talk about gaff tape. Gaff tape, I I'm not gonna even say anymore. You have to have gaff tape. You're gonna need this to set down markers. You're gonna need it to tape down cords so no one trips and you get sued. You're gonna need it to be able to put tube lights up sometimes. You're going to need it uh, potentially for rigging certain things to your C-stands. I mean, endless amounts of use and need for gaff tape. Get it, it's a must. Next, C-stands. C-stands are huge, guys. Uh, you have to have C-stands. C-stands are needed for rigging things up like lights, boom poles, uh, bounce boards, flags, etc. C stands is an incredible investment, and as long as you take care of them, I mean, C stands can last like forever. Um, so, C stands are an incredible, incredible investment and a must. Next, I want to talk about the bounce board. Bounce boards are super cheap. Um, but very effective and efficient. Uh, they're great, especially when you're shooting outdoors, guys. You know, if you're working with some harsh sunlight and you're able to move around and get, get shots quick, using a bounce board can act for fill. Uh, you can shoot, you know, with sun on the backside and use that bounce board so you can get some fill on the front of the face. I mean, there's endless needs and use for a bounce board, um, but I just think bounce boards, as well as, uh, you know, flags, reflectors, let scrims let's let's put that all into like i know it's not one category but let's put it all there together and just say all of those are great investments um again you're never not going to be using those uh, you know as you continue to level up and get further in your career you're going to continue to use bounce boards and bigger ones and more and more often uh so i think that's a great investment again reflectors kind of function in the same i think they're more for photography but you can still use them for film and they do great things um especially you know if you're trying to imitate um a fire uh, a fire or a candlelight or a fireplace you know being able to use a reflector shining some light on it golden side and just waving a little bit get that nice uh, effect like you got some fire uh going on on their face so just different things like that guys they make a huge huge difference and they're a huge help on set so i think bounce boards are incredible incredible investment clips clips are huge i think they go hand in hand with gaff tape uh again they're just something that becomes incredibly useful for you know locking on bounce boards for hanging up gels on your lights and just being able to rig up different things and in different ways when you're working with tight corners or small spaces these become a huge help in help helping you uh, create a problem solve and work through different situations and make the most of your scene and shots. Next is the tripod. Tripods are incredible investments, guys. I mean, you're going to use them all the time, whether it's for music videos, short films, documentaries, uh, corporate content, commercial content. I mean, I ran out of fingers. And, you know, you're gonna use them all the time. Uh, tripods are huge for getting, you know, still shots, wide shots, establishing shots, location features, um, doing interviews, something like this. You know, you want a clean still shot. I don't want my camera shaking and moving all the time while I'm filming this for you guys. Um, so again, tripods are huge, especially if you're doing commercial or corporate work, guys. I use, I literally use my tripods four or five times a week. So tripods is definitely one of the top investments I recommend for anyone and everyone. Another investment right here, gels. So I've got a ton of gels in here, but get rid of that noise. Anyways, I think gels, again, great investment. You're gonna use them a ton on filmmaking uh, projects. You know, if you're in the corporate or commercial sphere, then gels might not be, you know, a great investment for you because you're probably not gonna use it a ton. But if you're into narrative work or music videos, my gosh, you need gels. Uh, they make a huge difference. They're gonna be a huge help and they allow you to just create some really, really unique and creative looks, which is so, so very important when you're doing narrative work and especially music videos. Being able to use color um, and being able to use gels to set a color, set a mood, tint a scene, etc. you know, really add an influence 
how the viewer feels, you know, how the image, you know, feels in the shot is really giving off and presenting to the audience. Ooh. Last but not least, sandbags. Sandbags are huge. Uh, they go hand in hand with C-stands. If you're getting a C-stand, I highly, no. It's a must. You need sandbags if you're getting the C stand. Um, C stands when you start throwing on lights or just these other elements. When you start rigging it up, it's going to affect the weight distribution. I'm probably messing with the audio right now. Sorry. It's going to mess with the weight distribution, and you do not want a C stand falling and hitting someone in the head. One, it hurts really bad. Two, if you're in charge of the set, that's going to cost some money, and that's not going to be fun to pay. Um, so getting sandbags to make sure your set is safe. Um, you've got things locked and weighted down so they're not moving, they're staying in place. Uh, it just makes a huge difference, makes everyone feel safe, makes everyone feel comfortable, keeps the set safe, and makes things run fast, efficient, and smooth. All right, y'all, those are my, I don't even know, like, was that 13 or 14 things? <laughs> those are my 10 plus great investments for you as a filmmaker. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you also discovered, you know, an item or two that you could use on your next set. Don't waste any time. I'm telling you guys, these are incredible investments. They're gonna be well worth it uh, and they'll last you a long time if you're using them properly and effectively. Aside from the gaff tape. Gaff tape goes quick, but it's cheap. All right, y'all, that's it. Get out of here. Enjoy your day, enjoy your Friday. I'll see y'all next week. Later.